I am your host, Fat Dag. You're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Twitter at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, and your celebrations, and I'll include them as part of the show. Before we dive in, remember, when you're out of points, stop eating points. I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together, because I believe in you. Well, hello there. Welcome to episode 46 of Wise Advice. Um, Got an interesting day today. Got an interesting show prepared for you, Uh, and it all has to do with setting yourself up for success. If you're in here right now, if you're listening, uh, then you you want to be successful. Your mind's engaged. You're you're in for the long haul. So how do we set ourselves up for the future? We know this is a lifetime journey, and uh, so that's what we're going to kind of talk about. But first, I want to talk about Rita. Rita writes in out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 25 pounds down. She says your podcast is amazing. I listen on the way to work every morning, and you truly are an inspiration and a motivation. This is what I needed to help me truck on. Thanks. Well, Rita, I got to say, the fact that you tune in every morning, thank you. I'm honored to ride with you. It's very cool to to be, you know, in the in your ear as you're driving to and from work. Uh, But you're doing all the work. You know, all I'm doing is just providing you the reminder that you want to do this. So congrats on being down 25 pounds. Uh, As you know, we talk about more than once. It doesn't happen by accident. You're you're uh, you're focused, you're determined, you're disciplined. And that's how you get down 25 pounds. If you get down 25 pounds, you absolutely have the ability to get to goal. So, Rita, write in when you get to goal. I'm happy for you. Congrats there. Uh, next next up is uh, Bridget. Bridget out of Long Island. Did I pronounce that right? Long Island. Uh, Bridget out of Long Island, New York, writes in and says, Hello, I just wanted to say that I love your podcast. I have to admit, at first, I was disinterested. I mean, I've been a lifetime member for 17 years coming up this June. Would I really hear anything I haven't heard before? But being that Connect is all about support, I decided to support you and download an episode to give your podcast a try. And I'm so glad I did. Even at 17 years at Lifetime, I still struggle occasionally. I go through peaks and valleys maintaining my weight and following the program. And then periods of not following the program and gaining some back. Currently, I'm in a valley and I've been struggling to climb back out since January. Your show is like a mini meeting in my car on the way to work. It has given me such an inspiration that I can honestly say that today, for the first time in months, I am excited to be on the program again. I have my meals for the week planned out, and I'm going to schedule a few days this week to get a workout into my day. Thank you for doing what you do, both for both for Weight Watchers and for our country. Keep up the great work, uh, Bridget. Uh, you know, I laughed when I when I read that uh, you were disinterested. You know, and and I agree. Uh, when, when I started this, I was a little disinterested. You know, I had no idea what to expect. Uh, I added this to my toolbox because I needed the level of accountability. What I found is it didn't provide the accountability that I originally thought it was going to for me, but it did provide accountability to, I think, uh, right now, the last I checked, we're, we're, we're coming up real close to 100,000 downloads in less than two months. So so obviously there's an accountability piece that's working for somebody, uh, not entirely for me, but I love doing it. I love getting your email. So, so yeah, I was disinterested as well. I had no idea what to expect when this would start. Um, 17 years at Lifetime is absolutely amazing, and so that's where we all want to be. We all want to get to the point where, where we're going through this process, and 17 years later we look back and we don't even remember what it was like 17 years ago. So congrats on that. We continue to have the peaks and valleys, and um, and that's one of the things that we all do is it's, – it's, if you've been at Lifetime for 17 years, you're right. There's nothing that I can tell you that you don't already know. The program is real simple. It's just really, really three steps, right? Track everything you eat, get a little bit of exercise, and stop eating points when you're out of points. That's the most basic form of this plan. It doesn't get any easier than that. The problem is, is life takes over, and you have to wiggle your life in. You have to, you have to weave your life into those three points, And that becomes difficult. So it's not that I'm going to teach you anything new in this process. It's not that I'm going to tell you anything that's earth-shattering. All I'm going to do is remind you that you wanted to do this. I'm going to remind you that you signed up to do this, that you had a why strong enough to get this done. 
that's all the intent is here. And so, so the fact that you tune in, it's uh, it's honored. It's I'm an honored to you know have someone who's 17 years of lifetime joining us, because I think uh, that is the end result for all of us is to get there. So, uh, so very 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 cool. So, I want to switch to talking about setting yourself up for success. You know, again, right now if you're tuned in, which obviously you are, and you're and, and if you're paying attention and you, you're not here by accident, right? So especially now we're, we're, what, five, six minutes into this episode, you're still listening, which means you want to be successful. And, and your, your head is in the game. Your mind is in the game. You're all in to your own weight loss journey. So right now, everything is going smooth to some extent, or else you would, you would be completely disengaged. So the fact that you're engaged tells me that you're, you're engaged, you're dialed, dialed in, your head is in the game, but there's going to come a time when it isn't. And what I want to talk about is what is the plan then? How do we recognize it? How do we prevent it? How do we, how do we know when it's coming up and what do we do? So a couple of quick things before we dig too deep is, is absolutely is if you're listening to the podcast, go to iTunes, subscribe to the podcast, and, and I'll tell you why in a second. Go to fatdag.com, click on the email link, subscribe to the email newsletter. Uh, go bookmark fatdog, fatdag.com, download the app when it comes out, and I tell you all of those things – don't ever unsubscribe from them because what's going to happen is there will come a time when you're disinterested. If as long as, you know, three, four months down the road, if let's say you fall off the plan and you, you completely have given up mentally, your why never went away. So we didn't solve the why. So you you will eventually get a new join date. If you don't solve your why, you will join again, again in the future. Because what's going to happen is you're going to get frustrated. You're going to get uh, upset with the program. You'll quit for a little bit. That's what I did. And then a year or two or whatever down the road, you'll say, you know what? That's right. I actually wanted to lose weight. And you'll come back to the program. So my hope and intent with all the tools that I'm providing is that, is that when you, if that happens to you, that email comes in your inbox and it reminds you sooner rather than later to get back on the program. So that's the intent there. So I have a handful of folks who every once in a while I get an email from someone who, who's unsubscribed from the mailing list, and I understand it. And generally I think that's probably when you get to the point where you're so frustrated with the program, potentially, and you say, you know, I've done. Uh, but what I want to do is I want you two or three months down the road to get that email and that reminds you to get back on track. So, so my plan for staying on success is I set an upper limit of 190 pounds. I said, you know, at, at 190 pounds, that should be my mental indication that, that I've gone to a point where whatever I was doing wasn't working and the scale started to creep up. So that happened to me this morning. I hop on the scale 190.2. It's the first time I've seen that weight since July. Uh, so it was a little bit, you know, when I saw it this morning, I kind of, kind of suspected it, right? So uh, I had the, I had the inclination this morning to not hop on the scale because I kind of knew what it was going to be, but I, I realized that I weigh the same whether I hop on the scale or I don't. If I hop on the scale, then I can see the data point and I can set my plan into action to save myself. If I ignore the scale and I continue to ignore the scale, it, it's not going to be a good, good deal. So there's the potential that if I continue to ignore those data points, that the next time I hop on, we're at 195, we're 200, we're 210, and that doesn't get me anywhere. So, so my, my personal accountability is I'm on the scale every single day uh, or dang near every single day. There's a couple days when it's my morning routine, depending on what happens first thing in the morning, depends on I, I like to get on the scale with a clean weight. Um, and so if for some reason the dog gets up and I, and I have breakfast before I get back upstairs, then I don't weigh in that morning. But, but generally speaking, I weigh in every single morning uh, to start my day. So back when I hit goal, I hit goal at 172 pounds uh, back in September. At that point in my plan, I was doing no strength training or very, very little strength training. So, so I considered 172 my goal weight, and then I set a range of 172 up to about probably 175, 180, 178, somewhere in that ballpark I considered my, my, my goal range. So, so, that, so back when I was doing good, I'm on plan, I'm perfectly focused, I'm engaged in the process, I'm disciplined, I'm, I'm working it like a champ, I knew this day would come. I could see the future because I've been on the plan five of the times in the, in the past. I knew that at some point life takes over for me and, and the addictions get, you know, get hard and it, and it becomes difficult to stay on the plan. So I knew that day potentially would come. I didn't want it to, right? I, there's no way I wanted today to get here in this sense. So what I did back then is I'm going to walk you through this process is, is I, I hop on the scale. 
My scale is, and I'm not promoting it by any stretch, it just happens to be the one I have. Uh, it's a brand called Y, I still don't know how to pronounce it, Y Things, With Things, W I T H I N G S. Uh, it is connected to Bluetooth. So I hop on the scale no matter what, I get on the scale, the scale sends the data to the app in the phone automatically. I use a secondary program, it's called IFTTT. I'll put a link in the show notes for that. Uh, but the app stands for If Then, Then That. So IFTTT.com is the website for that. That is a, a secondary app. That app says, it, it, you know, it connects to the, um, to the app that's also connected to my scale. And every day that app goes in and pulls out my scale entry and it sends it to Twitter. So if you follow me on Twitter, every day you see my, my uh, scale entries put on Twitter. It also goes to Facebook. That's all done with that app called IFTTT. Uh, then I also set up one more trigger. So every day it says, if I hop on the scale, if there's a new weight entry, post it on Twitter. Knowing that I was going to potentially have this day, I set up one more step. I said, if scale entry is greater than 190, then send email. So on that day when I was feeling really good, I drafted an email. And I said, dear team, uh, if, if, if you're getting this email, then, then uh, I'm in denial. I'm either not tracking or, or something's going on, but, but I'm at a point where I need some intervention. I need some help. So automatically that sent out through Gmail. And so this morning I hopped on the scale, 190.2. Boom, the email gets sent out automatically. I'd half kind of forgotten I even set that up in the first place because I did it way back uh, probably July time frame. Uh, and so the email went out. And sure enough, I get a text this morning from, from my accountability team saying, hey, what's going on? And uh, so we got that solved. But a couple of things I want to talk about in that whole process. So that's just an automated system. You know, that's just one more tool I get to keep me accountable. Um, but I don't feel like at this point, I don't feel like I'm struggling. I actually feel really, really good about my journey. I feel really good about where I'm at. I feel really good about my mental ability right now. I feel really strong on the plan. I feel good. I look good it's from the standpoint of I'm still wearing a medium T-shirt. I'm still wearing my 31-inch jeans. All the clothes I have still fit. I'm not going into larger clothing. So in that regard, I'm certainly in a complacency stage. So I, I could very easily consider 190 my new goal weight and, and be content with that. You know, I don't have the, you know, I used to have a little bit of a belly, I guess, but I don't have any of that even at 190. So So the fact that I can't use the mirror, I can't use photos, I have to rely on the number on the scale to, to get me there. So here I am trying to figure out lifetime. I'm trying to navigate now. I've been at goal since, um, since September, uh, early in September. So I'm just navigating this lifetime thing. Uh, I, you know, I found a few things that I like, you know, food-wise that are low on points, and I, and I use them to get me to goal. But what I realized is I have the ability to overeat even on the things that are good for me. So that was an aha moment, and, and I just started realizing it this week is, is as I'm watching the scale climb. And so, you know, just because it's low in points, and it doesn't mean you can eat a ton of them. And so I've learned this week and, and soon is that, you know, I, if I get to that point where I'm relying on not tracking, tracking is what keeps me accountability to stop when I'm out of points, but I get real complacent and I don't track sometimes because I know I'm eating the things that got me to goal and I, and I just make the assumption that, well, if I eat this, this, and this, it's kind of like following the Simply Filling plan, only the things I'm eating are not necessarily approved on the list. They're on, the, on a modified list, which, as you know, if you modify the plan, you're not on the plan, and therefore you're doing your own thing, and your own thing is where it got me in trouble. So, so I'm back to not doing that. But uh, So, you know, also I learned that a little bit of sugar, um, for me, turns into a lot more sugar. So it's, I'm really strong before the first bite. So before that first bite of sugar, I now need to make that mental adjustment. Do I really want this? Because that first bite is going to lead to two, three, four, five more bites down the road. It's very easy to, for me to stop before that first one. I have a ton of willpower before I take the first bite. It's after the first bite that the willpower diminishes and it, and it goes on. And then you combine that with the complacency of I feel good, I look good, and things start to start to unravel. So so backing up, I hit goal at 172 pounds. Uh, I wasn't doing any strength training. Since then, I've been, I've been nine months of intense strength training. So you know, I haven't missed a, a workout in the, in the gym. And so I physically look different than I did nine months ago. 
I actually can see the muscle definition. Um, my medium T-shirt, I've been wearing medium T-shirts for a long time. My medium T-shirts are starting to get tight, but they're getting tight in the shoulders. They're getting tight in the arms. They're getting tight in the upper chest area. Uh, they're not tight at all around the waist. They're just still very loose around the waist. So, so I know that my muscle is adding to my increase on the scale, uh, without a doubt. The problem is, is I don't know where between 172 and 190, how much of that is muscle. I don't have any idea. So, you know, I'm sitting here trying to, I've been using that as an excuse saying, I've been watching the scale creep up from 172 into the 180s, 183. And, and again, knowing that I'm really comfortable with that weight, I've been, I've accepted that. So I've got to figure out what my goal weight is. I now need to reassess the entire plan and say, you know, at some point I need to figure out what my new goal weight is. And it could be 190. It could be 175. It could be 180. I truly at this point do not know. The only way for me to get back to knowing is the track. So starting now and starting today, I did it quite well, is uh, back on track. I opened the tracker. I logged in everything that I had. And so I am going to now track and see what happens to the scale. Uh, I'm content at 190. If 190 is where it is, 190 is where it's at, you know, and that and that's just fine. I'm guessing it's going to be closer to 185. I don't think 172 anymore is attainable anymore, just because of the physical definition that I can see in my muscle tone. So uh, back when I hit goal at 172, I didn't have the muscle definition that I do now. So. Again, the only way for me to tell where I am is to track. That's how the program works as we continue to track everything we're doing and, uh, and we move forward from there. So I have my why clearly in focus. My why is, is I do not want to get to the point where I'm now struggling anymore. So I'm, I'm very much focused. I'm very much engaged in the process, and we're just going to figure out where it is. So, so I hope that uh, what I want you to do is I want you to focus on that. I want you to have the discipline right now while you're still actively engaged in the process, and I want you to, to set yourself up for your future success. You don't get to 17 years of lifetime, like Bridget said. You don't get there without having a plan. We will continue to struggle as, as time goes on. There will be ups and downs, and you need to, while you're strong, figure out your plan for the days that you're not. And that's what I've done. That's what's working for me. I'm back on track, uh, and I'm just hitting it out of the park, so... Hope that gives you some insight, uh, but you know that's that's really where we're at. So let's talk about you. Let's talk about your celebrations. Tell me how you're working your plan. Tell me what strategies you've set up for your own success down the road. I really would like to hear that. Uh, tell me what you're celebrating. Let's go to fatdag.com. Click on podcast. Send in your celebrations. I'll work them in as part of the show. Uh, but that's going to do it for this time. So remember that losing weight and getting healthy has nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus. <laughs>